Have you guys ever wanted to use an AI in your Java code locally? Well, this is the right video. Today, I'm going to be showing you guys how to use Olama AI in your Java code locally. So you don't need no API key. You don't need to pay for anything. It's completely free and runs right on your computer. To get started, you want to go to olama.com and press the download button so you can download it on your computer. Then you choose your operating system. I'm working with Windows, so I'm going to download the download for Windows preview. Download it and then when it's done downloading, you can run it. Okay, so now I've run the program. All I have to do is press install and then just to wait for it to finish installing once the application is installed you can open it up and you might nothing might appear something might appear it's okay now as long as you open down here and you see that it's actually running we can go to our browser and we can type in http and then localhost and then 11434 just like this and what's this going to do is when you press enter it should say olama is running and that means that we've successfully downloaded installed it and it's now running another way that you can check that it works is by writing olama run and then put a model name and if you guys don't know which model you want to use there's a bunch here on the github the popular one might be like llama 3.1 but that's kind of like takes up a lot of space on your computer so i'm going to be picking Gemma 2 but you can use any of these so you can just write this and then press enter and it's going to first install it now that it's done downloading we can chat with the ai and say whatever we want to it and it will talk back to us however this video is to show you how we can use it in java so we're going to open our intellij create a new project we're going to use maven for um, our json object we're going to use java and we're going to call this Olama tutorial we're going to add some sample code i'm using java 17 and press create oh that's not allowed here okay that's fine before we do anything i'm going to go to our pom.xml if you don't have it open it's right here and i'm going to add in a dependency for json because we're going to be working with json a little bit here so just write this in here just like this and then press this button up here that'll load our dependency now let's go to our java file and delete the code that's already here the first thing you want to do is create variables for the model name and the prompt text so we're going to be using gemma 2 2b which is i ju you just saw me install that and the prompt text which is i'm just going to ask it what is cheese made of the next step is to create the url and the connection so we're going to write url url equals new url and we're going to put this url in which you just saw me use to check that it's running then we have to create an object of http url connection and we're going to use this right here and that should be good now the next step is we're going to create a string for what we're going to send to the website which is this right here we're going to send this and right here we're going to have the model name which is this and right here is we're gonna we're gonna put our prompt which is this and we're also gonna put stream as false and what that does is when we get our response it's all gonna be in one sentence and not split up into each individual word this makes it a lot cleaner and easier to use the next step is to actually send this JSON to our um, website. So we're going to be using output stream and let's import all that stuff. Now this part you don't actually have to do, but we're going to get the response code. That way, if we get any errors, we can identify why we got them. Now it's time to get the actual response. So to get a response, we're going to be using buffer reader and we're going to be reading from that connection, the response. But this response is not going to be really readable. I mean, it's going to be in JSON format. So when you try to print it out, it's going to print out a lot of text and not just the response to the prompt to show you guys we're going to be printing that out and we're going to uncomment this the next step is to take that response we just got and we're going to put it into a json object and that's why we had to go in our pom.xml and add this dependency so we can use this json object and we put the response in there and then we get the response text by getting the string response and you'll see where that is when we try it running this and finally since we actually open the connection we have to close the connection so we're going to be using con.disconnect and that's literally all you have to do now if we run our code you're going to see that it's going to work perfectly as you guys can see we got a response code of 200 which means okay and this is our actual response this whole thing and it's super long which is why we actually had to use our json object and fix that and now this is the response after we printed out response from the json object so you can see here model this created at this time and then response is all of this text right here and now we only took that text with the json object and we printed that out down here so we got a response and you can ask it whatever you want i hope that helped you guys if you guys wanted to see that if you want to see anything else just comment below i'll probably make a video on it audio 